So the title of chapter 17 is Factorization of Polynomials. This is our main application, you might say, of rings and fields. This is supposed to be the punchline. It's not the final chapter that we do, but it is the core of our final theme for the course, thinking about polynomials and factoring them. That does continue past this chapter, but this contains the core ideas. And it starts with a definition that's kind of hard to get your mind around of what it means for a polynomial to be irreducible over an integral domain or reducible over that integral domain. I will say before we read this and think about it, that this definition becomes much easier when the integral domain is actually a field. In that case, and that is one of the main cases we think about, except the case where d equals z, the definition becomes easier. Okay, so d is an integral domain. A polynomial from this ring of polynomials with coefficients in d that is neither or neither, if you prefer, the zero polynomial nor a unit in dx. So we don't want to think about the zero polynomial. And we don't want to think about units. Remember what units are? Elements with multiplicative inverses. Of which there may only be a very small number of them. For example, if d equals z, the only units in zx are plus or minus one. The constant polynomial is plus or minus one. There are no other units. So it could be a very small set of units. On the other hand, d equals r, the real numbers, rx has infinitely many units. Not all the polynomials, but just certain ones, but there are infinitely many. Can you guess what they are? What polynomials in rx are units? having multiplicative inverses. The non-zero, they're very simple. Starts with the C. Con con constant polynomials, the non-zero constant polynomials that are from Rx are units. You know, five is a unit in Rx because one fifth is its multiplicative inverse as a constant polynomial, just like it is as a real number. So there's infinitely many in Rx, there's only two in Zx. Anyway, we don't want to think about those in this definition. We're talking about the non-zero, non-unit ones, they're irreducible over D if whenever f of x is expressed as this product, either g of x or h of x is a unit. Actually, kind of familiar. Think of the integers. Where do you see this kind of definition in the integers? Not talking about polynomials, just the plain old integers. If whenever we got a number expressed as a product, one or the other must be a unit. What are the units of z? Plus or minus one. Kind of like the definition of a prime number, isn't it? Prime number in z is a number such that when you express it as a product of two other integers, one or the other has got to be. Plus or minus one, a unit, if we're including thinking about negative numbers. So this irreducible definition is similar to the definition of a prime number. A non-zero non-unit element that is not irreducible is called reducible. Okay, that's, def that's easy once you got the definition of irreducible. Look at a couple examples here. Well, let's just focus on the first example because it's kind of the strangest example. The polynomial 2x squared plus 4 is irreducible over q, but reducible over z. It's irreducible over the rationals, but reducible over the integers. Okay, again, both the rationals and the integers are rings. In fact, they're both integral domains. The rationals are a field, but the integers are not. Yes, you can take 2x squared plus 4 and factor it this way. You can factor out a 2. Neither 2 nor x squared plus 2 is a unit in zx because the only units of zx are plus or minus 1. So I have factored this polynomial as a product of non-units in zx. But in qx, 2 is a unit. So this factorization doesn't count toward the definition of 
reducibility. It's irreducible over Q. I mean, there are other factorizations you could do as well. You could write it as three times in parentheses. What would it be? Two thirds X squared plus uh, four thirds. But three is a unit in Q as well. It's kind of weird. This is all simpler if D does happen to be a field. And that's mentioned down here. In the case that the integral domain is a field, this definition is equivalent and more convenient to define a non constant polynomial to be irreducible over the field. The author made a mistake here, I, or maybe a, an omission. Irreducible over the field, because you're always reducible or irreducible over something. That word over is important, just like it was in that example. It's irreducible over Q, but reducible over Z. It matters what, you, what, what integral domain you're talking about. It's irreducible over the field F if F of X cannot be expressed as a product of two polynomials of lower degree. That's the simpler thing to think about. We already saw in example one that 2x squared plus 4 is irreducible over q. q is a field. You cannot write this as a product of two lower degree polynomials in qx. It's also irreducible over the reals because you can't write it as the product of two lower degree polynomials in rx. But it is reducible over the complex numbers. Why? 2x squared plus 4. And again, the author doesn't explain. You're supposed to try to figure out why. These are not both lower degrees. So this doesn't count for the factorization over C to say it's reducible over C. But what are the roots of x squared plus 2? They are complex numbers. They are plus or minus i times the square root of positive 2. Complex numbers with irrational coefficient of i. You can factor this as the product of two lower degree polynomials in Cx. x minus i square root of 2, x plus i square root of 2. And if that looks just too weird to believe, you can always check it by multiplication, foil this out. X times X is X squared. Outside times outside is plus I squared of two X. Inside times inside is minus I squared of two X. Last times last is minus I squared squared of two squared. But I squared is negative one and this is two. And you get two negative signs cancel, leaving you with x squared plus two. So this is a factorization, ultimately, of two x squared plus four as the product of two lower degree polynomials to say this one is the first one and this one is the second one. Showing that this polynomial is reducible over C. But you can't write it as the product of two lower degree polynomials in Rx. It's irreducible over R. This one, x squared minus 2, is irreducible over Q, but reducible over R. x squared minus 2 can be factored as the product of two lower degree polynomials with coefficients from the reals. But square root of 2 is not rational. So this is not the product of two lower degree polynomials over the rations. It's irreducible over Q, but reducible over R. Example four, X squared plus one is irreducible over Z three, but reducible over Z five. Z three and Z five are both fields. The polynomial ring, again, is never a field. But because Z3 and Z5 are fields, the factor theorem, for example, would be relevant that we just looked at. 
back in chapter 16. If f is a field, a is a zero of f of x, if and only if x minus a is a factor of f of x. So to think about factoring x squared plus one, either over z3 or z5, we got to look for roots. If I'm thinking of f of x being x squared plus one as an element of, let's start with z5x. z5x, does it have any roots in z5? f of zero is zero squared plus one is one, not zero. f of one is one squared plus one is two, not zero. f of two is two squared plus one, is five is zero mod five. So two is a root. F of three is three squared plus one is 10 is zero mod five. So three is a root. F of four is four squared plus one is 17 is two not zero mod five. So four is not a root. Hey, yeah, this is a degree two polynomial coefficients from a field Z5. It can't have any more than two roots. And it happens to have exactly two roots, two and three. Does that mean we can factor it as X minus two times X minus three? Yes, it does. Oh, I don't believe you. X squared plus one equals X minus two times X minus three, huh? Well, first of all, you know, how do you get rid of those minus signs? Well, mod by five, negative two mod five is positive three. Negative three mod five is positive two. So this is the same as this factorization in the same order actually. Now expand it out, foil it. And mod coefficients by five. Voila. It worked. Oh, wow. Now, don't teach this in your high school math class, future teachers, unless you know your students are going to be comfortable with modular arithmetic. So it is reducible over Z5, but the book says it's irreducible over Z3. Now we're gonna consider it the same symbol, the same polynomial symbol-wise, but as a, an element of a different polynomial ring, Z3x. F of zero is zero squared plus one is one, not zero. F of one is one squared plus one is two not zero and f of two is two squared plus one is five mod three is two not equal to zero now we're doing mod three arithmetic so none of the elements of z3 zero one and two are roots none of them are zeros of this polynomial so x minus zero x minus one x minus two cannot be factors Neither can x plus one or x plus two. This cannot be written as the product of two lower degree polynomials. It's irreducible over Z3. This kind of thinking is good and is related to this test right here. We'll end with this. This theorem says, if F is a field, and if you've got a polynomial with coefficients from F that is either degree two or three, like X squared plus one is, then F of X is reducible over F if and only if F of X has a zero in F. And since this is an if and only if, this is equivalent to saying F is irreducible over F if and only if F of X has no zero in F. One of those if and only if implications is true even for higher degree polynomials. And one of them is not. It's an if and only if here. The if and only if is true only for degree two and three. One of the directions is true even if you have a degree four or higher. 
one implication is not, I'll let you think about that. 